Hello and welcome back to our refactoring of Martin Fowler's simple movie rental example. In the last episode we pulled over both the price calculation and the frequent rental point calculation logic from the rental class to the movie class. Because I argumented that branching over the state of a movie should be close to the movie so that when we change these available states we see the logic that depends on it and can change it too. But actually, I already complained repeatedly about this switch statement in general. And now that it's in the movie class, I'm going to explain you why. If I think about this movie price code here, I think about it as a type of the movie. There's a type of movie that says regular, new releases and children's. And actually, for representing types, we have a type system in Java. So we don't need to encode types in uh, fields and then do any branching. So I would like to replace this branching by polymorphism. One easy way to achieve that would be to create a subclass of movie for each of the different types, like a children's movie class, a regular movie class, and a new release class. Unfortunately, this approach doesn't work, because probably I want to change a new release movie at some later point to a regular movie or a children's movie, because it doesn't stay a release movie forever. So I need to change the type of the movie later on. And I cannot do this if I created a concrete subclass because I cannot change the concrete type of an object later on. Fortunately, some smart people solved this problem earlier on and the gang of four named the solution the state pattern in their great book. So we're going to refactor a state pattern into a code and we're going to do that step by step. The first step is what Martin Fowler calls self-encapsulating field. So we're going to replace the integer price code by an actual class. Let me do that. We start with defining an inner class, I will pull that out later on, that is called price. This price has an abstract integer get price code, which implies that the class itself is abstract. And then I have a subclass for each of the price codes. So there's a public class children's price extends price that implements price code returning movie dot children's and I have two more of those saying regular price which returns regular and new release price which returns new release. In the next steps I want to replace the integer field type of price code by my new classes. I want to do this replacement only internally so the API of the movie will not change. To ensure that I always use my replacement logic I will replace the initialization of the field and the constructor by using the setter for price code. As a next step, I'm going to replace the integer price code field by a field of type price. Therefore, I'm going to rename the field to price and then change its type. As a result, the getter and setter for the price code fail and I need to repair them. For the getter, that's easily done by calling get price code on our new price instance. And for the setter, I actually need to implement a switch statement on the price code saying depending on the price code I get in if it's a regular movie I'm going to set price to a new regular price instance in case I have a children's movie I'm going to set price to a new children's price instance in case I have a new release movie I'm going to set price to a new release. Oh, it's a new release price. And in case neither of these applies, I'm going to throw a new illegal argument exception because apparently my price code was non existent, saying illegal price code. At this point, actually, my code should work again, so I'm going to execute the test cases to make sure this is the case. Yes, I want to save movie. My tests still run. 
so the outer world didn't recognize my change. At this point I want to move out my newly created classes up here to their own files. So I use the move type to new file refactoring and it wants me to... ah okay. Um, I accidentally implemented these classes as non-static inner classes so he wants to encapsulate the outer instance uh, in the extractor class. What I'm going to do to prevent this is just declare all these classes static so they don't have an outer instance of movie and then I can apply the refactoring uh, pulling the classes out to new files. Yes, this should work. So I move out this, pull out this one, pull out this one, pull out this one, and finally I pull out the last one. This should work again, and just to make sure, I'm going to re execute my test cases. Yes, everything went right. Now that I pulled over the price code into its own class, I want to pull over the calculation logic that works on that price code to the same class. Therefore, I'm going to copy over this whole thing here to our abstract base class. This works, and then I'm going to delegate from this method to our newly created method. Get charge, number of days rented. This should be the transparent change, so when I re-execute the test, everything should still work. And now I've finally reached the point where I can replace the switch statement in the price calculation logic by polymorphism. So let's go over to the price class. We have here now one implementation of getCharge that handles all the cases. But actually we already created subclasses for the specific cases. So I'm going to replace this method bit by bit by a concrete implementation in the subclasses. So I'm going to copy over all the price calculation logic for the regular case, go to the regular price and override the getCharge method. I'm going to place here the exact logic I copied over and say double result equals 2. In case the number of days rented is larger than 2 then I'm going to add the additional uh, price and in the end I'm going to return this result. This should already be a completely transparent change so I re-execute the test cases. Just to make sure that the logic now really uses this implementation I'm going to execute the test using code coverage so I should see that this code is actually used and that this branch in the switch statement is not used any longer. Let me quickly clear the formatting. Now I'm going to repeat the exact same steps with the remaining cases. So for a new release, I move that over, override get charge, and insert the, log the logic I copied here. This is actually pretty easy. Quickly re-execute the test cases to see everything still works. Yes, everything still works and copy over the last case, children's movies. To children's price, override get charge, insert the logic I copied over, double result equals 1.5, return result, save that one, test cases should execute and all be green, yes, and now at that point I actually can remove all the implementation here because you see it's no longer used, it's all red. I can throw that all out and make this method here abstract. Again this change should be completely transparent so when I re-execute the tests everything should still work. Okay this was it for the price calculation logic. Now I'm going to repeat the exact same steps for the frequent rent upon calculation. I copy over this method and move it to the price class. Then I delegate from the movie class to this new implementation on our price field. And then I'm going to take apart the implementation in the price class, of course, after executing a test case and see everything still works. Yes, it does. So I'm going to move over 
the only special case for the new release movie to uh, uh, the new release price implementation override get frequent rental points and say okay if number of days rented bigger one return true else return one this should work yes it does and in the price calculation I can actually simplify this to the default implementation of return one for the other cases this should still work too fine so let's have a look at what we accomplished we actually pulled out the price calculation logic of the movie class and split it up using the state pattern. What does this achieve? We can actually see the price calculation logic for a specific type of movie by simply going to this one class and seeing how the price is calculated. Furthermore, it gets easier to add new movie types to the system. We just have to create a new subclass and implement the handling within the movie class. You might argue that we still have a switch statement down here and that we couldn't get rid of it. But I argue that this switch statement down here is a simple mapping from price code to a type. So we could in fact replace it by a map or something. And this is far easier to understand than the price calculation logic was in the switch statement we had earlier. Regarding the refactorings we did, we put quite some effort into optimizing our code and making it better. But I think that it's worth it because now we have a system that is easily extendable and a system we can work with without stumbling upon surprises on every corner. This about wraps up Martin Fowler's simple example on refactoring. But actually I decided that I want to take a look at another aspect of refactoring which is how to adjust the tests after we did a refactoring of the system. Okay, this is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked this episode, please give me a thumbs up. If not, drop me a comment or send me a message. Let me know what you think. I'm always happy to improve on your feedback. You might also want to have a look at my channel and the other things I'm doing. And give me feedback about what you think. Thanks a lot for watching again and hope to see you next time.